Now, um, many years ago, I was trafficked. Um, I was sold into sex trafficking in the modeling and entertainment industry, which is why I'm here testifying about God encounters with media and fashion and modeling and all of these things because that was the very area that the enemy tried to exploit, abuse, violate, and destroy me and take me out. Hallelujah. I could just stop and do a little praise break right there. He should have killed me when he had the chance because it's too late now. <laughs> it's, too it's too late now. It's too late now. And for some of you, that is bearing witness in your heart because you know you should have died a long time ago. You know you could have been taken out. You know there were times in your life where you were so depressed you didn't want to live anymore. You know exactly what I'm talking about because you know you've had struggles that you've had to overcome and you're still here. And the fact that you are alive and in your right mind, sitting clothed and in this place is a testimony that God is real and he's moving in your life. Okay, Proverbs 16, verse 1. Go ahead and make all the plans you want, but it's the Lord who will ultimately direct your steps. We are all in love with our own opinions, convinced they're correct, but the Lord is in the midst of us, testing, probing every motive. Before you do anything, put your trust totally in God and not yourself. Then every plan you make will succeed. The Lord works everything together to accomplish his purpose. I've had times where it's, it's those times where you have an encounter with God that it, like everything changes, everything changes. And so like I've had times where um, here recently I'll share a story um, just less than a month ago, my husband and I uh, got to get a weekend away to just get refreshed and poured into. And it was amazing because we don't get to do that that often. And um, so it was really special that we got to do that. And um, we went to something called Glory Nights and a, um, and a minister just prophesied over us, this guy named Brian Guerin. And he released a word over us that God was going to use us through, through media, that God was really going to anoint and use us through media to reach more people. And it was just really awesome because God had spoken that to us before, but there was an encounter with the word this time that it felt like this is the season and the timing. We both encountered the glory of God so strong that I don't even have time to testify of all we encountered after that word was released over us. But what started happening was I started getting phone calls from TV uh, programs. I started getting people reaching out in the media sphere of influence in this world saying, hey, we want to do your story on the Discovery Channel. We want to do your story on this show created for the miraculous and all of these things. And now this is something what's really interesting is these people were all trying to reach out to me three or four years ago. But some kind of hindrance or delay came in the way where I did an interview with uh, the show for Discovery Channel like three years ago and nothing ever happened in it. I was like, okay, well, Lord, there you go. Uh, this, this other girl for this other show, she'd been trying to get in contact with me for three years. But every time someone would tell her, you need to know this person, you need to interview her on her show, something would happen and she wouldn't get my number, wasn't able to reach out to me. And so after an encounter with God that was tangible and overwhelmed every, every single cell in our bodies, it was like motion and advancement and this speeding up and this redeeming of time started happening. And it was from encounter. Now, my husband and I are not, we, we're not the kind of people that just run after stuff just to run after it. Even if God speaks something over us, what we will do, and this is wisdom for somebody, is we will pray into it and say, okay, God, I hear what you're saying. Um, maybe we've had a dream or a vision, or maybe God has spoken something to us and we're just kind of feeling prompted on something. We will steward it well by writing it down, write the vision down, make it plain, write it down so that when the time comes, people are going to run with you to fulfill it. Okay. But sometimes it's, it's not necessarily the timing. So what you have to do is when you hear a word from God, when you have a dream, when you have an encounter with God, you write it down, you steward it well, you pray over it, you pray into it, you find other scriptures that pertain to it. It, 
And you ask God, what are you moving on? Are you moving on this? What do you want me to do? What is my next step? What do you want me to do? And sometimes it's just that he was giving you a glimpse of it and he was positioning you at the gate, but he has not shot the gun yet for you to run that race. And so sometimes he gives you a snippet just so that you can save it, tuck it in your back pocket. So when the people that you're supposed to be aligned with to fulfill the vision come into your life, you already have had an encounter with God that you have stewarded well, that you have listened to, that you have researched out in the scriptures, you've documented it and you can say, hey, let me show you this vision that the Lord spoke to me a couple years ago. Let me talk to you about this. I really know that this is God's alignment because I've had an encounter with him and you appear to be part of the fulfillment of this thing. Does that make sense? So let me share another story with you. I have a friend named Gina um, at Lamorte and she... Um, Years ago, I had a, a word spoken over me that God was going to do something with fashion. Again, I'm not just chasing after fashion or chasing after media. We are in the everyday life advancing the kingdom of God, praying for the sick, praying for people to be free, going after just being with Jesus and moving with him and moving with, his, with the heartbeat of Father God from heaven. And we're just, we're doing the work. We're doing the stuff that he's leading us to do, right? We're not just chasing after everything that there is to chase after. But heaven starts to bring everything to us. Because if we seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, everything that's everything that we need will be added to us. We will bump into destiny on mistake, not by striving, not by sweating, not by, by fretting, not by anxiety, but we will just bump into it because it is supernaturally magnetized towards us because we're walking in sync with heaven and we are a people led by encounter with God. And we can't miss it because we're in relationship. So what happened when I got this word about fashion and this, that, and the other, and I was like, okay, God, that's cool. So I prayed over it. I was like, I'm going to steward it. I'll try a few things. And, you know, just didn't really seem like there was any more movement on it. I didn't really see that heaven was doing anything else with it. So I said, God, I know that's your word that you spoke over me, wrote it out, put it in a journal, literally put it on the shelf. I said, God, when you're ready to move on that, I'm so in love with you. I know you're going to reveal to me when the time is. He's not just dangling carrots in front of us and saying, <laughs> just kidding. No, he's not some God that wants you to be confused and then will tease you because you were confused about it. That's a little G kind of God. That's an enemy that would do something like that. Our God, King of Kings, Lord of Lords is good. And every good and perfect gift comes from him. He is so desperately in love with us. God is not the author of confusion. He wants us to know the plans that he has for us. Every single day of our life has been recorded in a heavenly book. He's got it all figured out. And thank God we don't have to stress about figuring it out for ourselves. And some of us just need to surrender all of the stress of trying to figure it out and say, I trust you, God. And I'm going to let you work it out. And I'm going to sleep tonight and have heavenly dreams and encounters because I ain't worried about it. So the word I put in a journal on the shelf. And I said, Lord, if you're going to do something with fashion one day, that's awesome. Two years later, I get a phone call. I get divinely connected with this girl named Gina Lamorte. She's a fashion designer, uh, works with celebrities, and this amazing, amazing woman of God. And she's also radically in love with Jesus. And so we end up talking, and as we're talking, Holy Spirit, I had an encounter, had a moment where I felt a little nudge, and I heard him say, go get that journal off the shelf. That vision is for now. So I said, Gina, this may be crazy, but can I read to you a word and an encounter that I had a couple years ago? She said, well, yes. I got it. I read it to her. And would you know that about three or four of the words recorded in that vision of what God had spoken and revealed in an encounter two years ago were actually part of the vision for the business that she was about to launch. And she said, you're a part of this. Now, um, many years ago, I was trafficked. Um, I was sold into sex trafficking in the modeling and entertainment industry, which is why I'm here testifying about God encounters with media and fashion and modeling and all of these things, because that was the very area that the enemy tried to exploit, abuse, violate, and destroy me and take me out. Hallelujah. I could just stop and do a little praise break right there. 
He should have killed me when he had the chance because it's too late now. <laughs> it's, too it's too late now. It's too late now. And for some of you, that is bearing witness in your heart because you know you should have died a long time ago. You know you could have been taken out. You know there were times in your life where you were so depressed you didn't want to live anymore. You know exactly what I'm talking about because you know you've had struggles that you've had to overcome and you're still here. And the fact that you are alive and in your right mind, sitting clothed and in this place is a testimony that God is real and he's moving in your life. So I was talking to Gina, became a part of the vision. She actually became a sister to me because when you know what God's saying, you're stewarding his voice by encounter, the people come along that you're aligned with and it's family. It's a family divine connection where you're like, whoa, you are my sister. It's like we've been raised together. I'm supposed to know you my whole life. Because we've had encounters with God where God has said the same thing and we're in the same throne room. We just didn't look over and realize that we were there at the same time. So then we bump into each other and we're like, well, that's what God was saying to me. Well, that's what God was saying to me. Well, let's run together. Right? Because God can do a lot with agreement. So. Then she launches this amazing um, company called Trade where um, there's these beautiful handbags that help fund freeing um, people from trafficking, which ties in with the very redemption on my life. And when I went to New York for a press event during Fashion Week with her to support and be a part of that, of that vision and that dream, do you know that the moment we drove into New York, within five minutes we drove past the store of the person that trafficked me. Would you know that the press event in a sky rise was on the same street as one of the stores of the person that purchased me and trafficked me? And there I was in the top of a sky rise looking down at something symbolically that represented my enemy that tried to kill me. And I was with God. And I believe that God is going to do that for some of you. I believe that he is. I believe that's his heart for all of us. That by encounters, as we are led by encounters with him, that he makes our enemies our footstool. That the enemy gets under our feet. And I just declare over you, let God arise and his enemies be scattered right now in Jesus' name. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet, the word says. But it all comes from leaning in and being sensitive to encounters, not just being led by flesh or emotions or tossed back and forth with indecision on things that we just, we just don't know. Here's the thing. You don't have to know and figure it out on your own. You just have to lean into heaven and see what he's saying and see what he's revealing. Let him figure it all out, and you just get to be happy and walk with him.